Hello everybody, this is Amel Taylor and welcome to uh, the 2020 uh, Global Animals in Disasters, um, sorry, Global Animal Disaster Management Conference. Um, our next session is around uh, the legal framework for protecting animals from disasters, a case study from India. And we have with us Hansen Thambi Prem. This session is proudly sponsored by the C4 Group. Um, it's a privilege to have Hansen with us today. And if you're interested to know more about him and what he's going to talk about, um, we have the bios and we have the abstracts on our um, website under speakers. And before we start, I'm just going to give a few um, general housekeeping comments. So we have in the Zoom, uh, we have the chat feature that is disabled today. So if you've got any questions, please put them in the Q&A and we'll try and get to those at the end of the presentation. We encourage you to use the hashtag GADMC uh, comp uh, for Twitter and social media and a short evaluation is going to be made available at the end of the session when you log out. Just as a reminder, the videos uh, we are recording today and the videos will be available, but not until they've been edited um, and they'll be released as part of our um, GADMAC award ceremony in July. So without further ado, I'd like to um, welcome um, Hanson Thambi Prem to talk about the legal framework for protecting animals in disasters. Over to you, Hanson. Yeah, thank you so much, Mel, for the kind introduction. Uh, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all, depending on from where you are participating. First of all, I'm really thankful to the organizers uh, for giving me this opportunity to share some of the experiences uh, that we have been having in India uh, in terms of uh, the legal framework for protecting animals from disasters. So I would like to acknowledge uh, at this point, uh, this will be the experience of uh, the Animals and Disasters Initiative that we have been doing for the past uh, nearly more than 10 years in India. And I would like to acknowledge the contributions of my team, the organization and all the stakeholders who have been part of this. A special thanks to Gerardo uh, who have been providing all his support and all who have been part of this work in a collective and a coordinated manner be it in India or from international and the stakeholders that have been part of this initiative. So with that, I would like to start the session on uh, uh, today's session, which I'll be talking about uh, the experiences that we have been having in terms of uh, bringing about policy level changes and the lobby and advocacy efforts in India for uh, protecting animals from disasters. And it's a journey that I'll be sharing since uh, 2008 that we have started in India and where we have progressed till date uh, in terms of uh, the initiatives that we have taken uh, in, a, in a way that we uh, would like to uh, move and share how, what are the experience that we have uh, come all these years uh, and experienced uh, experiences and the recommendation that we would like to share at the end of the uh, session as well. So with that, I will move, uh, like to move on. So in uh, today's uh, session, I would like to touch upon uh, four aspects uh, in my uh, session. One is, uh, as we all uh, are here for the common cause of protecting animals and disasters, and we strongly agree to this cause, I would like to emphasize the fact on why we need to protect animals from disasters from an Indian context. And second, uh, the case study on the legal framework for protecting animals in India. So I would like to share a case study uh, in taking into consideration the time we have spent and the experiences that we have gained since 2008 till 2020 and how we have progressed uh, stage by stage. And uh, some of the lessons learned and the key recommendations we would like to put forward in this uh, uh, conference. Yeah, so moving on, uh, why do we need to protect animals from disasters? I think this is a very general question, common question, and as, at the same time, a very important question that we all have in front of us, especially when we're working in the disaster humanitarian sector. And uh, why do we need to protect animals from disasters? And uh, when we say animals, it includes all types of animals. And when we say disasters, it includes all types of disasters. But uh, yeah, the question might be a simple question, but we need a lot of uh, facts and statistics to prove why we need to take the stand in protecting animals from disasters and uh, what are the uh, things that help us to uh, take these initiatives uh, for protecting animals in India especially. So with that I would like to share some of the statistics uh, 
So here to start with, uh, the livestock care and management, especially in the rural areas of India, is taken care by women, which is the, con the contribution they make is really very significant. This is a statistic shared by IVRI, Indian Veterinary Research Institute, which says 90% of the livestock care and management activities are carried out by women in rural areas. On documents or on the ownership part of it, it might be owned by a man. But if you look at the livestock care and management, women play a very significant role and it's very important to acknowledge their contributions. And it really helps by protecting animals. We are also empowering the women and that's a really important point why we need to protect animals. Second point I would like to make is uh, the population of uh, livestock population that is owned is very significant. There is around 70 percentage of the livestock population that is owned by the poor and vulnerable communities in India. This is a statistic shared by FAO. And here it says 70 percentage of livestock population, which means India has a very large animal population and 70 percentage of them lies in the hands of the poor and vulnerable. So when we say we are working towards protecting the poor and vulnerable people in the humanitarian and disaster sector, we cannot ignore animals because 70 percentage of the animals lie in their hand and they are responsible for it. At the same time, it's their livelihood. So that makes it a very important point why we need to protect animals from disasters. And the third statistics talks about 67 percentage of the poor people are dependent on livestock for their livelihood, which means uh, on, on a one, one side, 70 percentage of the livestock is owned by people. On the other hand, 67 percentage of people, poor people are dependent on them for their livelihood, which means we, they are int integral part of their livelihood and they cannot be separated from the poor people because India being an agrarian society, it makes it really very relevant why we need to protect animals along with people. And uh, because uh, livestock and livelihood plays a very important part in the economy of the country as well. And also another important statistic shared by Central Water Commission. This is an average that has been shared. It's 97,000 cattle is lost to floods annually in India. And interestingly, this statistic talks about one species that is the cattle, and one disaster, that's the floods. So naturally, there's another question that comes to our mind. Okay, what's the, what happens to the other species and what happens to other disasters? So to answer that question, we don't have enough data. We are not doing enough in getting the enough, recording the data to show the actual impact of different species affected by different disasters. Having said that, even the data that we have now is not a small number which means we are losing more than 256 cattle every day due to floods alone, which is why it's really important why we need to protect animals in disasters. So these are some of the statistics. And moving on, I have a few more statistics to share. Uh, another statistic clearly shows that 36% of the disaster losses are absorbed by the livestock subsector, which is really a very important statistics, which means that livestock plays a very important role in uh, absorbing the disaster losses as uh, in disaster in uh, immediately after disaster we usually uh, call a disaster affected community or a person as a disaster victim whereas when we look at the livestock here actually livestock plays a dual role where livestock is considered a victim at the same time they're also considered a hope for the people who are affected which means they play a very important role in absorbing the disaster losses and it's really important why we need to protect them and moving on it, uh, the livestock subsector significantly contributes towards the agricultural GDP, which is 25 percentage. And this comes mainly from milk and milk products. And uh, usually this is often overlooked or not highlighted because when you say agricultural GDP, all that is highlighted is the crops and the crop producers that comes from agriculture sector. But within that, there is a very significant contribution that comes from the livestock subsector, which is often not highlighted which is why it's really important why we need to protect them. And going on to the other two important statistics, like the disaster, direct disaster losses on the central government revenue is 12%, which is really very significant. At the same time, it also impacts uh, directly to the 2% of the India's GDP, which, is, which are the statistics shared by World Bank. And these are some of the strong reasons and uh, facts, which really gives 
tells us why it's really important why we need to protect animals from disasters. So moving on, I'll go to the case study on uh, the legal framework for protecting animals in India. So with this, uh, I would like to share. So this has been a journey of from uh, where we have started uh, from uh, when we started this initiative in 2008 as part of the Animals and Disasters Initiative. And uh, I'll share some of the experiences and how we have progressed till date from uh, where we uh, conceived this idea and uh, have uh, uh, had some of the interesting uh, coordination and uh, initiatives with the government of India and other stakeholders as well. So moving on, before I just would like to give you a context of the Indian uh, government. We have three levels of government. One is the national government, federal, cent uh, state government, and the local government. So at the same time, I would like to give you an overview of where do the animals in India stand, which means what is the responsibility of the government, direct primary responsibility of the government on the different animals. So at the national level, we have the ministries, which is the Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change, who are directly uh, responsible for the wildlife, and they have the central government schemes that support the state governments to carry out their uh, programs to, uh, towards wildlife. At the same time, there is a Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husband and Dairy that looks after livestock, poultry and fisheries. They are responsible for the livestock, poultry and fisheries and they provide support to the state governments on these uh, relevant schemes. Uh, earlier, this ministry was uh, under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. And this is a new ministry that has been form, uh, formed since 2019. So there is a dedicated ministry now, which is really a good thing. And uh, at the same time, at the state level, there are dedicated departments for animal resources like livestock, poultry, fisheries, and wildlife that look into their relevant subjects on animals. And at the local level, be it the districts, corporations, municipalities, or urban local bodies, they are more responsible for the uh, dogs, strays, or companion animals as well. So this is how uh, uh, animals are seen or managed uh, primarily by the government and the structure of the government in India. And within this, what we try to see is address some of the core areas that we need to see how animals can be protected and comprehensively address. So some of the five areas that we see, uh, see that are really important is the legal frameworks and resources that's necessary to protect animals. The required baseline information, as I, uh, as I shared before, we don't have, we are not doing enough to do the proper reporting or documenting of animal losses, disaggregated animal losses and disasters, which is really important. So baseline information, disaster response protocols, and uh, what are the procedures we have for responding immediately after disaster to protect animals, and the necessary capacity building of the stakeholders who are there within the veterinary sector and the humanitarian sector who could really play a very important role in protecting animals and to create a culture of preparedness among the communities, the local people, the farmers, animal owners on how they can play a very important role during the immediate aftermath of disaster in taking up some best practices or meaningful actions to protect animals. So this will be some of the points which I'll be touching upon and at the right Below corner of the slide, I've given a short uh, country's progress uh, frame, which we uh, try to measure how we have been progressing as a country towards what we aim to achieve as part of this initiative. So we have always been seen as a country that has been reactive to different disasters, rather being very proactive. And uh, from the reactive stage, how we need to pro, pro, uh, step by step uh, uh, climb the ladder to reach an activated stage to be really proactive to addressing issues related to animals and disasters. So some of the experiences and how we have progressed on this ladder will be something that I'll be touching upon in each of these slides and uh, depending on the uh, each year's progress that we have made in the country. So moving on, uh, starting with the Constitution of India, uh, we have a very strong Constitution of India which has a clear cut uh, fundamental duties and uh, we are and well drafted statement which clearly gives every Indian citizen the mandate or responsibility to protect and have compassion toward living creatures, which is really very good, which is something really strongly that helps us in our initiative and has helped us to 
uh, take forward many initiatives because of this uh, constitution that we have uh, already have in place. And also there is a very important quote uh, that has been given by the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi Ji. The greatness of a nation can be judged by the way its animals are treated, which is really a very powerful statement, a powerful quote. And we feel that it's really important that we need to uh, imbibe these uh, qualities in our uh, way of how we look at animals so that we can be humane and uh, uh, find out uh, appropriate ways in protecting and managing animals during disasters and uh, during normal times as well. So moving on, to start with, as I said, I'll be sharing uh, the journey since 2008. So a journey of uh, how we uh, need to look into protecting animals started in 2008 when we, uh, the uh, Kosi, there was a floods in uh, Bihar called the Bihar Kosi floods. And this was the time when there were thousands of livestock that were lost. And uh, that was the first time when uh, stakeholders like uh, World Animal Protection, Brooks India, Bombay SPCA, many other animal welfare organizations, Bihar Veterinary College, all joined hands and we organized the first joint rapid veterinary response. And this was the time that was an eye opener to all the stakeholders that made us realize the need for capacity and resources to protect animals and disasters. Because with all these stakeholders put together, we could help only a few hundreds of animals, whereas the need was enormous and we didn't have the enough resources or capacity. So this is how we started to work on the first component of being reactive to identifying what is the real need, what are the gaps, what are the resources, what are the capacities that we need to have to address this if we need to do really some tangible work of protecting animals. At the same time, in this year was a very significant year where the National Disaster Management Authority came out with the guidelines for management of livestock disasters. And there's a dedicated chapter six, which talks about the guidelines for management of livestock disasters, which also has put forward some gaps. They've identified the existing gaps in animal disaster management area, which is really a very important document that gave us a lot of scope and opportunities that we really need to look into and work towards addressing them. So this was released in July 2008 and it was mainly for management of biological disasters. So this was a start of all the things that happened in India towards uh, protecting animals and disasters and uh, we started working on those lines. So then we progressed on in 2009. There was another very significant milestone where the government of India released the national policy on disaster management, where there was a very dedicated chapter uh, seven, which talks about response. And within that response chapter, there is a dedicated section on animal care. And this statement, I'm not reading the entire statement, but just a part of it is like, it is necessary to devise appropriate measures to protect animals and find means to shelter and feed them during disasters and their aftermath through a community effort to the extent possible. So this is a very comprehensive policy statement that is there in this National Policy on Disaster Management, which really helped us in our initiative again to strengthen the efforts that we could coordinate and put in towards whatever we have been doing. And um, then this was the time we also started this pilot veterinary emergency response unit, a Veru unit in Bihar Veterinary College. These were based on the lessons we learned from other countries, Latin American countries and uh, different countries where they were having the Veru initiative. Based on that, we could try a pilot in India in one of the state, which was really prone to floods and see how it, how, what the outcomes could be so that we could build on it. So in the 2010, we started to see how we moved to the third stage from being reactive to identified then to the engaged. We started to engage the Bihar Veterinary College and the state level stakeholders for training and capacity building initiatives. So we started the course on veterinary emergency response unit for veterinary students, as well as trainings for farmers. And this, ha this had series of lecture series, tabletop exercises and mock drills, where the uh, students could get trained, both uh, uh, knowledge and skill component uh, together so that they have the enough knowledge and capacities uh, to go out and uh, address the issues of animals. And this will be something adding on to their veterinary uh, degree and uh, uh, merit that will help them in their 
uh, work in the future uh, once they graduate from their college as well. So this was an initiative that was started and it really went on very well in 2010. So in uh, 2011, so this initiative actually, uh, we started to extend this initiative further. So we said, uh, we have been doing this training and capacity buildings. So we really need to extend it and expand it further to see that how more and more awareness could reach and education could reach the public. That means mainly the farmers, the other stakeholders, not only veterinarians, we need to reach out to the uh, National Disaster Response Force, the local communities, the local authorities, as well as the people who own animals. So we started to think more, expand the initiatives and make it more broader. So this is where we came out with several uh, education and awareness resources. And also there were mock drills being organized in schools, cinema theaters, uh, hospitals, and many other sectors. But there was always a gap. There was no mock drills for protecting animals in disaster. So that we thought, why not we uh, do mock drills to see how we can educate the public and the NDRF to see how they can also uh, develop the skills on protecting animals and uh, a co have a coordinated way in uh, rescuing animals during disasters. Yeah, obviously we didn't use the uh, real animals. It was the dummy animals that were used for educational purpose. However, there were uh, places where real animals were also used for treatment, examination, the triage and the veterinary component of it. But uh, for the rescue part and all, we used dummy animals where the NDRF uh, could learn some of these uh, skills in uh, handling and uh, rescuing uh, animals as well. So there were uh, several uh, uh, public awareness activities also that were organized in different programs like exhibition fairs and uh, uh, through puppet shows, uh, street plays, and uh, especially in Bihar. So this was fully done in the state of Bihar, starting with uh, educational uh, training and capacity building and then the awareness and education component. So the 2010 and 2011, we were fully engaged with all the stakeholders that are possible we could think of in the veterinary and the disaster sector. So we were in the third stage that we have reached in engaging and keeping them engaged in as much as uh, 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 activities as possible to ensure that we highlight the issue of protecting animals and disasters. So moving on in 2012, we again, this was the time when uh, Bihar Veru became really very active and we could gain the recognition by the government of India, especially we could, it had a national influence where uh, two key bodies at the national level recognized the initiatives taken by Bihar Veru. One was the ICIR, that is Indian Council of Agricultural Research and NDMA, the National Disaster Management Authority, who really acknowledged and appreciated the efforts that were taken by Bihar Veterinary College as part of the Veru initiative. And uh, they uh, supported a 21-day summer school on cross-sectoral DRR strategies in the livestock sector. So this is when a national level uh, summer school was organized in Bihar Veterinary College on this specific subject on uh, DRR strategies in the livestock se sector, where uh, several veterinary faculties from all over India participated and they were trained, including uh, on animal disaster management as well as on the leg standards. So this year also was something that uh, was the time when we started to think something that we need to take the initiative that we done at the state level should create a ripple effect or cascading effect on other states and as well as go on to the national level. And this uh, really helped in a way. Uh, and in 2013, uh, we could uh, organize a national conference on animal disaster management. And uh, this was, really helpful where we could engage all the national level veterinarians, humanitarian practitioners, both within the country and even international participation who could, which made a very significant impact on the efforts on the subject on animal disaster management in the country. And uh, as a result of this conference, uh, the long awaited national livestock policy was released as well. And there are dedicated section on contingency plans to protect animals that was mentioned in that policy. And uh, also five other veterinary universities in the country adopted the Bihar model. As a result of this, as an outcome of the conference, we could further see how we could support and uh, establish uh, five, five more verus uh, in, sorry, five more verus in the uh, five regions of the country. That was Veru North in Palampur, that is in Himachal Pradesh, in the northern part of the country. 
at Veru South in Chennai, Tamil Nadu in the southern part of India. Veru East in Gowadi in Assam, that's in the northeastern part of India. Veru West in Anand, Gujarat in the western part of India. And Veru Central in Jabalpur in Madhya Pradesh, the central of India, along with the Veru pilot model that was in Patna, Bihar. So 2013 was a very significant year for us to see how we can move the engaged stage rather than being only state level, but to engage all the stakeholders possible at the national level and create a national impact. So this is when, uh, and then we had series of trainings and capacity building programs for the couple of years from there. And 2016 was another very significant year where we really could uh, uh, have organized a national workshop with the National Institute of Disaster Management in uh, engaging all the veterinary stakeholders in the country. And two national disaster management plans were released. One, is, one was released by the Department of Animal Husbandry, Dairy and Fisheries in March 2016. And this plan is dedicated to managing the livestock, poultry and fisheries before, during and after disaster, which talks about the department's role in all the three stages of the disaster. And it has been uh, clear uh, roles that have been specified in the plan it was released. And the other plan was by the National Disaster Management Authority that was released in June 2016. And this specifies the roles of agencies in the disaster management. And uh, this was again, this plan has been updated by in two, 2019. So uh, this was released by the Prime Minister in 2016. And uh, the recommendations for integrating animal protection components were also shared with them so that that has also been integrated in it. So these were the two key uh, documents and the plans that uh, we could get in 2016. So this is where we consider that India has uh, moved from just being engaged to a stage that we considered had been qualified because we had the plan in place for protecting animals, uh, both a dedicated plan as well as the uh, plan that uh, for all the departments which has the animal protection integrated component Absolutely. so moving on then, minutes sorry yes. 27 minutes oh okay i'll just make it quick i'm just running so so yeah and 20, 2017 was another significant year where we had a series of trainings and capacity building programs for the national disaster response force personnel and the veru and more than 360 search and rescue Personals were trained from they had, there are already 12 uh, battalions in the country and out of that 360 of them have been trained. So in the recent disasters, we have been noticing that they have been rescuing animals because of this training and the regular mock drills that we have been doing with them. And out of the four Veru, uh, uh, in the Veru, there have been four days dedicated trainings that have been imparted to the in all the units. And so far, more than 1000 veterinarians have been trained on this uh, subject. So without taking much time, I'll just move to 2018, again, we could see that um, the Verus, out of the six, three of the Verus could get support from their respective state governments. And the Verus South could establish three more new Verus in Southern zone uh, based on their own resources that they could mobilize from their state government. And in Bihar, along with Bihar State Disaster Management Authority, they have trained a uh, thousand veterinarians. And Bihar, uh, Veru West, along with the Gujarat Institute of Disaster Management, they had uh, agreements and they're having regular series of trainings for the veterinarians. So this is a regular program and that uh, uh, they have been uh, able to mobilize their resources for carrying out the programs. And moving on in 2019, it's another important year where uh, the, uh, we could contribute in the, in the uh, discussions that we had with the IFRC Asia Pacific region for having uh, animal protection included into the IFRC's law and preparedness checklist. So this is uh, uh, the credit should go to the uh, Bangkok office and other uh, international office and all who have been part of this. But really, this has helped in a way that uh, we could uh, influence and get this uh, uh, animal protection component into this law and preparedness checklist, which uh, the IFRC Asia Pacific will be providing support to 38 national societies in the region. So moving on in 2020, as this was a year, this is the worst pandemic we all experienced, the COVID-19. So we try to innovate and find ways of how we could protect animals. So this was the time we could promote the prep at online courses in the veterinary universities. And three of the universities in India have this uh, integrated. They have a dedicated web page uh, created for this and this course is being promoted. And also remote responses were organized. And uh, yeah, I'll not be talking much on this because there's a dedicated session on this. So these are some of the things. 
So we have progressed and this is the stage we considered we have moved from qualified to activated. So I see, so, so these are some of the things that we have done in India. But having said that, we have just touched the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of scope, a lot of opportunity, a lot of gaps, a lot of areas that we still need to work on as a country to comprehensively address the animals of disasters. So, and uh, I'll just touch upon some of the lessons learned quickly. So four main lessons. One is commitment, sorry. One is the commitment was really very important that we experienced, be it political, institutional and government commitment is crucial, especially when you need to have a legal discourse in plan preparation, policy level changes. Without commitment, we can't progress anywhere. So this is a very big lesson for us. Second is coordination. We knew that coordination is a very challenging thing. It's very engaged. We need to engage diverse stakeholders. It's challenging, but at the same time, it's very rewarding when you uh, take that as a challenge and you mobilize and coordinate with all the stakeholders possible. And then biosecurity area that is often overlooked and need immediate proactive actionable measures because it's often considered a dry subject, but now no more it's going to be a dry subject after this pandemic. So I think we need to be more proactive on this. And research. Research is an area for education in managing animals from disasters. And there are a lot of opportunities in this area on animals and disasters, which we feel has a potential for a lot of research in the sector. And finally, some of the recommendations. Key four recommendation is, I think institution, it is, we need to have strong institutional mechanism for protecting all animals from national to local. When I say, I want to stress on the point, all animals, because when we say all animals, it is so diverse, it's so big, because uh, that is something we need as dedicated institutional mechanism in place if we need to look at it in a more comprehensive way. And that is something that uh, I would like to uh, see that in this forum, it will be important that we uh, need to see how it can be addressed or taken up. And the resources, there are a lot of resources that we need for rescuing, handling, or managing animals including the resources for managing the programs. So we need to have adequate resources. Without that, we can't uh, make significant impact or progress. And one welfare, one health and one welfare approach for countries to cope with uh, climate emergencies as we are experiencing. This is uh, many countries. This is a very important area that we need to think of. And finally, the insurance. Insurance on animal health, well-being and protection, including farmers' welfare, because whatever we have today, we can call it as a livestock insurance, but in practical terms, it is only a farmer's insurance because the benefit goes to the farmer. But it needs to imbibe the insurance of animal health, well-being and protection, including the welfare of the farmer. It should be more holistic. And I think there is a lot of things that we could do in the insurance sector as well. So with that, I would like to sincerely thank and sorry for the time, if I have uh, crossed the time and thank the organizers for giving this opportunity to share. And I also would like to thank all the uh, people who have been part of this journey in India and internationally and acknowledge all of their contribution. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Hansen. It's um, a fa fantastic project, so comprehensive. Uh, every time I could think of a good question, you addressed it in the next stage in terms of uh, the engagement with people or you know the, the buy-in, etc. Um, if people have got any questions, uh, for Hansen, please put them in the Q&A and I shall address those. Um, I particularly liked the fact you had things like street theatres and puppet shows as uh, additional ways to, to engage people with these, this whole idea. Um, and for attendees, just to let you know, we do have, as Hansen mentioned, a dedicated session on Prep Vet. Uh, it's the first session on, on day five of the conference. So I'm just going to see there's a question here. Um, so I have a question here from, from Nidhi. Um, they say thank you for the presentation and also have you got any recommendations or sorry have recommendations been made for the Assam Bihar floods in which many wild animals also suffered right yeah thank you for that question really very important question so yes uh, see Assam is a state that is facing floods every year and this has been uh, very challenging for all the authorities and uh, stakeholders who are working on it. We have been working in Assam, yeah. So uh, the point is uh, we are working, we have a veterinary emergency response unit there and we are working um, there, uh, doing their best in coordinating with the government and uh, also they're working out a state animal disaster management plan in line with the national plan that is already existing. But I would like to admit that it's not uh, 
uh, still finalized or released that we wish it could be done earlier, but still there are things that are delaying in uh, that. I think uh, that would be something very important if we can accelerate or get that plan uh, released as early as possible. That would really help in putting out the roles more clearly out there for the department to take responsibilities, one thing. So this is a, actually, it's a challenge. We are, but we are moving in that direction and there are stakeholders working on the direction, but I think they need to be more proactive and take more uh, faster steps. And another point on wildlife, yeah. Uh, department, uh, as I said, they uh, focus on, the Department of Animal Husbandry focus on addressing the needs of livestock, poultry and fisheries, not the wildlife. But when you say wildlife, there is a dedicated wildlife department and uh, uh, that needs to look into that and they needs to, be part of the discussion of this plan so that they can also integrate it. So, but this is something work in progress. I would like to admit, I don't have uh, anything to uh, share as a achievement at this point of time. Only thing is we are, need to progress. We still are progressing, but still a lot has to be done. You are absolutely right because this is a state that is suffering every year. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, I've got a couple of questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a minute now. Steve, Steve wants to know where you get your mannequins from. The uh, the the uh, animals for your training. Where do you get your rescue Sorry? dummies? Where do you get okay. your rescue dummies from? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So actually that was prepared locally in India. So we just uh, prepared locally with a uh, uh, person we knew here uh, in uh, uh, India. But I think uh, if you ask, uh, does it have the required uh, standards or does it really weigh the uh, real, uh, it, uh, you can't compare it with the real animal, it's just a mock, mock a dummy and really doesn't match the size or the weight of the real actual animal. But actually, it was an initiative. Just we tried. We started trying to do it. So that I think the important point that we, I think we really need more capacity building, training skills on those aspects. That certainly we need to admit. But at the same time, the point we try to see is the subject on animal disaster management and the interest towards it should be highlighted. And that was really something that we could get across. And that's how it helped us make progress. But I think certainly we need to build upon many things, be it the technicalities, be the professional way of how you take it forward. Many things are there we can we need to certainly improve on. But the core of the thing is we need to keep the subject in light, highlight the importance of protecting animals and take it forward. Absolutely. Well, I think we're all in agreement with that one. Um, just out of interest, how sustainable are the uh, various, the, the, the veterinary emergency response units? I mean, how uh, with, with changes of funding and, uh, and shifting of focus over time, Right. Yeah. To start with, uh, this Veru initiative we started in Bihar and it was uh, always supported by World Animal Protection's uh, resources and all. And um, so we could expand and uh, we received support from governments also for some of the trainings, be it the National Disaster Response Force, the 100% resources, be it the fund budget was by NDMA, NDRF, sorry, National Disaster Response Force, which... Uh, some of the trainings that they have done was fully by the support from the government, be it government of India or the state governments. Out of the six verus, today, if you ask, three of the verus, that is 50 percentage of the verus, have received state government support, be it in Bihar, be it in Tamil Nadu, or be it in Gujarat. Three of the verus have got state government support. To be more specific, in Tamil Nadu, they have got support from the state government where they've submitted a proposal and to be, I would like to say, I don't, uh, sorry, I uh, can't quote it in the Indian, uh, to quote it in Indian terms, it's two crores of uh, Indian rupees has been sanctioned for their training and capacity building in Tamil Nadu, where they could take up training and capacity buildings. And um, they, they also helped in supporting and establishing three more verus that was not, that was directly from the state government support and all the resources. So, which is something very, impressive, something good that they have owned it, owned the uh, initiative, taken it forward, and they have the passion to take it, uh, include it part of the government uh, system and institutionalize it so that they understand that it is really benefiting uh, the animals in disasters and building the capacities that they need to protect animals. So that is something very important. Similarly, in Bihar, they could train more than 1,000 government veterinary officers through the Veru initiative, all by their own state government resources. 
and in uh, gujarat they are having series of trainings with the gujarat institute of disaster management which is a state administrative training institute uh, likewise every state has a state administrative training institute so they have signed an agreement with them to have training and capacity building initiative so these are some significant uh, progress that we have made through the veru which we can say have uh, taken them to a level where they are sustainable but we hope that the other verus as well move in this direction and become sustainable and we need to see as i said before resources is something an area that we need to look in because resources we need for this initiative to uh, live and continue and uh, extend the help for protecting the people and animals who are depend on them in disasters yeah thank you that's really sort of impressive um um so i have one final question now for you one of our uh, attendees yes. has asked if you have any recommendations for drafting a national plan for disaster management in a country where the differences are so big in terms of um, livestock density, types of wild, uh, livestock production, the vulnerability of buildings and economic issues. Um, yeah, if you have any recommendations. Right, uh, I feel, uh, uh, would like to say that um, we need to have a series of consultation process in place because we did have a series of consultation, be it state level consultation, national level consultation, and consultation with the relevant stakeholders. Mm -hmm be the veterinary research institutes, veterinary universities, the animal husbandry practitioners, the NGOs, the humanitarian sectors, be it all the sectors, all the stakeholders, we need to in, engage them in a stake, uh, consultation process. And I think that process, uh, the outcome of the process is what uh, came out, uh, we could come out with the recommendation and then evolve the plan out of it. So I think uh, that would be the way Ideally, we could go about, but if there's a, any better way, we would like to learn as well. So you've really got the uh, different perspectives and a lot of buy-in at the early stage. It sounds good. Okay, I think we've probably come to the end of the questions there. And uh, thank you to uh, yourself, Hampton, firstly, but also to all our attendees for being here uh, this afternoon with us, uh, in Australia, that is, in the afternoon. Um, our next presentation is in around an hour and 20 minutes' time. Um, and that's on uh, communication. So media uh, impacts, um, how that impacts the vulnerability of animals in disasters. So please come back in an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, thank you once again, Hanson. Thank you so much, Bye. Mel. Thank you.